He is Lindy Ruff. He is the head coach of the New Jersey Devils, and he joins me now. Lindy, how are you today? Thanks so much for stopping by. Oh, you're welcome. I'm well, thank you. Uh, so this is, I mean, you're, you're to me, you know, as you embark on this, you know, game one this year, uh, New Jersey Devils, Detroit Red Wings, you know, um, you go back to 1993 when Lindy Ruff calls it a career on the ice and uh, ends up on the bench as an assistant coach with Roger Nelson's Florida Panthers. And since then, uh, you know, tonight marks 30 years of uninterrupted employment behind a bench. Uh, in the National Hockey League. First of all, congratulations. That is as close to unprecedented uh, for his, uh, for a coach as you're going to see. And uh, I, I am curious, like when you first took that assistant, I want to get to your Devils here in a second, but when you first took that assistant position with Roger back in na- the 93-94 season, what did you think the rest of your professional life was going to be? <laughs> well, uh, I probably didn't imagine that it was going to... Uh... Uh, take me to where I'm at today for sure. But, uh, you know, I go back to uh, that last year I played in San Diego with the uh, San Diego Gulls in the International Hockey League, and Rick Dudley was my coach. And he said to me near the end, it was the end of the year, just said, uh, I hear your name is being mentioned as an ins- assistant coach with Florida and uh, asked me if I was interested. And I said, uh, I said, I would be. I said, that I don't have you know, he's coaching experience, uh, but he said, uh, you know, Roger had called him, thought I'd be a, a fit with uh, with him. And uh, that's basically how I got my coaching career started. What, um, I'm always curious about lessons on the way and, you know, listen, to, to work with someone like Roger Nelson in your, in your first shot in the NHL certainly is a blessing. What did you learn from Roger? I mean, he was a, a very unique thinker, a very distinct man. Uh, in the National Hockey League and, and really in the, in the OHL too with the Peterborough Peets. But everywhere he went, he sort of left an impression on everybody. You know, every time I'll you know talk to Dallas Aikens, you know, there'll be Roger Nelson stories. You know, a, a scout Jeff Tui with the Florida Panthers, talk to him and it's Roger Nelson stories. Uh, what are some of your Roger Nelson stories? Well, uh, you know, I, I really don't know if there's a better man you, you could have be, been behind the bench with or... Uh, a better a better man to guide you, uh, a young man, into a coaching career because uh, Roger was not only a really good coach, he was he was a real good person. Uh, the way he approached the mm-hmm. game, um, you know, the details that, you know, I think he, he was really, uh, you know, his details that went into watching a game and, you know, post-game video and he was, you know, I think he was known for all his video work and, you know, he would have video clips where he would need the volume to go up or the volume to go down, or can we pause it here or pause it there? And, uh, you know, he guided me. I, you know, I still remember the first day that uh, I got down to Florida and I said, Roger, I'm new at this, uh, you know, what do I need? And he said to me, you know, first thing we do is we need to go to Office Depot. We need to get you some paper and some pencils and, and stuff for your office. And uh, he took me there, but uh you know i think the 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 stories uh for me are just you know he cared a lot about his players he he genuinely you know tried to make sure that everybody felt important and and along the way everybody had a role inside the game and uh and that his details for the game were just incredible uh so he was he was an awesome guy to be around you know, in uh, I'm sure you know this story. It's sort of been well told around coaching circles, I'm sure. When he was the head coach of the Peterborough Peets, uh, and this caused a rule change, a number of number of rule changes that, that Roger ushered in, uh, he would have defenseman Ron Stackhouse go in net for penalty shots. And when the player grabbed the puck at center, Stackhouse would charge out and poke the puck away at the blue line. I think Stackhouse went seven for seven uh, one year for the Peterborough Peets. I want to get to your devils, but this final thought on, on Roger... Were there any sort of like wild ideas that, you know, Roger opened your eyes to or sort of the possibilities of things you could try behind the bench? (laughs) I know I've heard that story before, Uh, you know, and I, I I can give you this one other story that I thought was, you know, Roger not only coached hockey, he coached baseball, he coached uh, youth baseball. And he told me the story that, 
you know, kids couldn't field, the kids couldn't field bunt. So he had his kids bunt all the time. And I said, Roger, I mean, the only fun you have in a baseball game is, is by hitting the ball and you make all the kids bunt. And he said, yeah, he said, we would win all the time. They, they couldn't feel the bunts and we'd get on base and he said, we'd always win. And I said, well, he just took half the fun of playing baseball by making a bunt. And he, uh, you know, there's kids that couldn't get to games. He'd go pick up, uh, but he was, I, I think, uh, an innovator. He thought outside the box. Uh, you know the, yeah. the story about not not chasing behind the net, and his, you know the story about bringing his dog out, and yep. his dog wouldn't chase behind a player behind the net. And I, I think that um, <laughs> you know stories that he needed time. He needed time in junior. I, I can't justify this, but you know that he needed time, and he had a friend in the stands that you know had a handful of coins that were warm from being in his hands. He could throw them out there now. Yep. They picked up all the coins. Yep. Roger had extra time. And so, <laughs> I mean, he really yep. thought outside the box, he could get his best <laughs> defensive line back out there again. And uh, I thought the, uh, somebody had the one line that, uh, you know, told me that uh, he had a red light in his, in his place. And anytime there was a, a zero zero game going on, a red light would go off his house and he'd be able to put it on. Cause he enjoyed defense so much. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think one of the baseball stories someone so he used to have his catcher would have uh, an apple in his back pocket, and then during rundowns the catcher would throw the apple over the third baseman's head, and the runner would think that oh he just launched it into left field and would run right into the catcher who had the ball in his glove to get the out. Like he wasn't just thinking this way for hockey, Lindy. He was thinking this way for uh, for for baseball as well. Um, yeah. let me, let me get your thoughts on, on, on this, year, this year's edition of the devils. And I'm curious about one thing specific, cause I'm looking at, I'm looking at Jack Hughes, um, and, and his line. And I see, you know, uh, Tyler Toffoli comes in, uh, and I said, I, I wonder to myself, you know, when, when Toffoli first, uh, you know, the, the Diego sharing Govich trade, when Toffoli comes in and you're thinking, okay, it's Hughes, it's Brad. And now I've got to Foley there. Like, what was the? Because that line looks like it might be on. It might look. Like it might be the best line in hockey this year. Um, what's the thinking behind to Foley being the last piece of that wonderful pair, which is Hughes and Brat? Well, I I really think to Foley is a pure goal scorer. Uh, you know, and you've got uh, two guys with with dynamic playmaking ability and, and great speed. Uh, but you have a veteran guy there that knows where to go, knows where to set up, knows where to be. Um, and, you know, probably doesn't need as many opportunities as, as some of the other goal scorers or, or people we've had with those guys. So, uh, you know, the thinking is just try to balance that line, give it, uh, give it an element of just a, uh, you know, a pure goal scorer. And I think uh, Tyler Tripoli brings that along with the, the experience of, of being able to, uh, play the game at both ends of the rink, and and he's a proven winner. Mm-hmm. Uh, he is, and that line looks fantastic. Uh, Elliot and I had a chance to sit down with him again. It seems like a yearly tradition. We sit down with, with Jack Hughes at the NHL Players Tour, and uh, it, it's hard not to be a real fan of this guy, whether you're a fan and listening to him in an interview or watching him play. I am curious, considering how creative Jack Hughes is, how much do you say to yourself, I really want to coach him and, you know, sort of get my claws into his game, but he's so dynamic and so creative. Like w- where's the line between just letting him play his game, but then also I need to be a coach here and sort of guide him and maneuver him in very specific ways. You know, I, I guess I would put that kind of in an 80, 20, that 80% of the time, um, what he does is, is something you can't teach. Um, I've got this line. You just can't teach that. Um, mm-hmm. because ha- uh, half of his creativity is, is stuff that, uh, you couldn't teach to another person. So you, you've got to let him do his thing. Uh, his thing is a lot different than other players. Uh, his lateral movement, uh, his quickness, his ability to, you know, s- stop in small ice and create his own space. Um, so I think it's, where the teaching comes in or where you pull them back is, okay, Jack, we're in a game where it's, um, you know, we've got a couple goal lead. We need, we need this to happen. Uh, we don't need this, uh, a or B. Um, and 
you know, when we're going into lockdown mode or we've got a couple minutes left in a period or a couple minutes left in the game, and, and I want you to be that guy I can throw over the boards, uh, the details of, of you know, your your neutral zone pursuit and your D zone play has to be spot on. And, and I think that's the part that it, he grew so much as a player last year and uh, has, has basically embraced the thought of, you know, if I'm better in this area, it, it's only going to lead to better things. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the other things that Hughes mentioned to us, a, a couple of things were really interesting. One, um, he talked about a sort of emotional letdown after the Rangers series that for the Devils to beat the Rangers, like, first of all, what a great series that was, a flat-out fun series to watch. Just so much emotion in every, not just every game, but every shift of that series. And he said there was that emotional letdown and it cost them in in the subsequent series, which uh, they ended up losing, we guys ended up losing to the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, but, you know, he also talked about the message after the Seattle Kraken knocked off the Colorado Avalanche, that in the room, a lot of guys were saying, hey, you know what? Anything is possible. We can totally do this. Look what Seattle just did to Colorado. Do you have a thought on on either of those issues, uh, an emotional letdown after the Rangers and you know, being sort of inspired by what Seattle did to Colorado in the playoffs? Well, you know what? I, I, I think he used emotional letdown, and, and I think he's he's... He's right in some cases. Uh, it was a really emotional series, I think, for a lot of players that have you know, have never played in in a playoff series. Um, you know, you the emotional highs and lows in that series from from going down 0-2 to then winning three games in a row, and you got a chance to clinch, and you've got a game six, and and you don't get that done. To now, now you're back on. Now you're back on. You know, it, back in your own building, you've got a game seven that uh, nobody has been involved with for the most part. Uh, what the thing I was most impressed with is is how focused and how well we played in that game seven. Uh, and mm-hmm. for for my part, it, it was a tight game for 30 minutes or until Mike McLeod scored his goal. Uh, we played well. We had some opportunities. We we stuck to the game plan. We we weren't playing careless hockey. Uh, but the high after winning that game, uh, I I don't know if it was, you know, an emotional letdown for Carolina or such a high to to beat the Rangers. And and how can you not feel that way after you've just gone through seven games and it's been as you described one, yeah, one heck of a series by both teams. Uh, and then you have to turn around and get ready to play a game, uh, you know, basically a day and a half later or two days later. Uh, so I, I don't know if it was a letdown, but, it, you know, emotionally, you know, coming off of such a high, um, mm-hmm. we didn't, uh, we didn't play our, we didn't play our best. I think we had some fatigue in our game. Uh, I thought, you know, playing right away would help us, but I, I think the, you know, the toll it took on some of our players, uh, just to get us to that point was uh, something that you you learn from and you grow from. Speaking of growing, and we'll uh, we'll, we'll end on this one. You've got a game. You've got a game tonight against the Detroit Red Wings, and I'm sure plenty to prepare for. Um, let let me end on this one. Um, players for the New Jersey Devils uh, who haven't gone through it before, and that's a lion's share of your your team um, this year, aren't going to sneak up on anybody. Like, everybody knows how good your team is. Everybody saw how good your team was last year, not just regular season, but playoffs as well. How do you prepare your team knowing that there aren't going to be, you know, you're not going to sneak up and steal two points from anybody this year. Everybody is going to be prepared for the New Jersey Devils. What do you do different with a team that has and skates with expectation now? Well, uh, there's two things that are part of that. I think by halfway through last year, we were getting a lot of recognition for for how well we had played and where we were at. Um, we started to deal with that in the last three months, uh, that there was no team taking us for granted. We weren't surprising anybody, that we were sitting in you know, first or second in our, our, our division and, and in the conference, uh, you know, always up in that top top two or three teams. So we weren't surprising anybody for the last uh, 30, 40 games. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and what we've talked about through training camp here is is to embrace. We've earned the right. We've earned the right for that respect now, uh, based on the fact that how well we played. Uh, that defensively we were a better team. Offensively we were we were a real good team. So we know that it, it's going to be a hard year. We know that again there's be teams that you you can't take a single team for granted, and teams will in all likelihood mm-hmm. try to defend us differently than maybe another team that uh, is maybe uh, not included in the playoff picture. Uh, so we have to guard against any, any type of, uh, letdown by, by knowing that every opponent we play is going to be ready, but we, we earn that. We, we finish where we finish because we worked hard to get there. And it's one thing you've got to wrap your arms around and embrace that you know, you would rather be there than trying to battle your, your way into the uh, top 16. Excellent. Um, Lindy, congrats on the extension and congrats on 30 seasons of uninterrupted employment uh, behind a bench in the NHL. That is that is no small feat. Congratulations, Lindy. Enjoy tonight's game against the Red Wings and best of luck this season. Well, thank you and uh, we appreciate you having me on.